All right, mathletes. So the big question our viewers want to know is how in the world do I graph using decimals? Not only how do I graph, but how do I graph these piecewise functions? Let's take a look. Let's make it short and easy. So follow me because you're going to see how easy this is. So let's say we have this function and it's broken up into these two pieces. So the first half is linear. So when X is less than two, we're going to see it being linear. And when X is greater uh, or equal to two, we're going to see it's quadratic here, right? So it's going to be parabolic. So how did I get this graph? So the main part, it's a little piece, but that our people are missing is when you're entering in those domains, those restrictions, make sure you're using this, these curly brackets here. And that's what's going to do the trick for you. So between the function, there's no space in between, right? So from here to here, there's no space and you're just defining, you know, where you're telling decimals, where is it that you want me to graph this? And you're telling it, oh, in this case, I want you to graph it when X is less than two. And in this one down here, we're graphing it, right? That half of the function when X is greater than or equal to two. So make sure that you're throwing in those curly brackets and that's gonna tell it where to start and finish. And it's that easy, mathletes. So again, uh, even if you had uh, three parts or four parts, right, of these piecewise functions, you would just tell it where to start and where to finish. And it's that easy. So just make sure you're comfortable with this set builder notation here, and that will do the trick. All right, mathletes. So if you found this helpful, make sure you like this video, subscribe, and tell a friend or 10,000. We'll see you next time. Peace.